It's 1954, and this is Bernard Darwin. He's actually the grandson of Charles Darwin, you know, the evolution guy, which kind of actually makes sense. Bernard Darwin, he loved Royal Liverpool Golf Club, and he'd always write about Hoylake in a real survival of the fittest kind of way. The wind blows harder at Hoylake, that nursery of great golfers, he once wrote. Hoylake, blown upon by mighty winds, is a breeder of mighty champions. But what's funny about Royal Liverpool is that from the sky, it doesn't really look like much. It's missing the dramatic shoreline of Royal Port Rush or the epic bunkering of Carnoustie. To many, it looks just like a flat piece of land surrounded by houses, not an open championship venue. But that's the genius of Royal Liverpool. It's a course that leaves players completely exposed to the elements with nothing to protect them. In doing so, Royal Liverpool magnifies the single most important skill in Lynx golf. It is, in many ways, this skill that's the secret to winning the Open Championship. Rory and Tiger and Bobby Jones and all of Hoylake's other great winners figured this out. Look closely and you'll be able to spot this critical strategy in every successful game plan. Week in, week out golf on the PGA Tour is basically target practice. You're throwing darts at a dartboard, trying to hit your ball into very specific yardages. Nowadays, when a player hits a drive during a regular tour event, it spends more than 95% of its lifespan in the air. This is why you see players grinding over launch monitors on the range and spraying their golf clubs with water and stressing out over tiny breaths of wind. When you play so much through the air, tiny things like air density, they start to matter a lot because the more dialed in you are, the more birdie opportunities you'll have and the more money you'll make. But that's what's so cool and different about Lynx golf and it's why it breaks so many pro golfers' brains along the way. The third hole at Royal Liverpool is a great example. The hole is where an old racetrack used to be. So there's this tiny wall signifying out of bounds which cuts in sharply from the right. The fairway bulges at about 215 yards, so that's basically where players want to hit their tee shots. If they start pushing into 230 yard range, the fairway pinches into a narrow corridor. Now, if you're into the 260 yard range, you're starting to look at fescue and other rough. We've talked about dispersion patterns in some of our previous videos, the link to those is in the description below, but they really are important because it's how pros make sense of these situations. During a normal tour event on a still day, 215 yards is like a no stress standard five iron. The ball will basically stop wherever it lands, hit like 10 shots in this situation, and the pattern of all those shots would form a neat and tidy, slightly tilted oval like this. But that's where things start to get complicated when you play Lynx golf, because when the wind starts blowing, the shape of those dispersion patterns begins to change. When you're directly into wind, the ball goes shorter, but those dispersion patterns also get wider. Left and right misses are amplified. When players are directly downwind, that shape, it changes again. The ball goes further and the pattern also gets narrower. Side to side misses are less drastic, so if you judge the distance right, you can actually get a lot more aggressive when you're playing downwind. But there is one skill that decodes the chaos and makes things a little easier players' ability to control their peak height. The higher the peak height, the more the wind affects your golf ball. The lower your peak height, the less it will. As Marty Jertsen, Ping's VP of Fitting and Performance, explains. If you want to simplify it, it's like, hey, downwind, you can generally play more aggressive. Downwind, you want to launch the ball higher. So it's like, well, how do you hit it high with high spin? You can tee it high, but if you're a skilled player, try not to hit it high in the face get your attack angle up, but you still hit it in the middle or low on the face so you can get high launch, high spin relative to your standard trajectory shot. That way you can maximize distance downwind. Into the wind and crosswinds, really try to minimize your time of flight. And that's generally through controlling your peak height. Controlling your peak height is more important than reducing spin. Even though I think the announcers, everyone's like, oh, he's really trying to control his spin. Really what they're doing is reducing their peak height, reducing the time that the wind acts on the golf ball. That's for into the wind scenarios. Pundits talk a lot about hitting the ball low at opens, but it's being able to hit the ball high too that is a real underrated skill because that's what helps you use the wind to your advantage. 
It shows up all the time on open leaderboards too, like at last year's open. Eight of the top 10 finishers hit the ball higher on average than the rest of the PGA Tour. Rory McIlroy won at Royal Liverpool in 2014. His stock drive is one of the highest on the PGA Tour at nearly 130 feet but he also has a really underrated ability to hit the ball low when he wants to. Tiger, obviously, more than any other golfer in history, had an elite ability to control his peak height. When he wanted to hit the ball high to take advantage of that downwind, he would tee the ball higher and swing more up. On stingers, he'd do the opposite. He'd play the ball back in his stance and lean the shaft forward. Adjusting your tee height, by the way, is actually a really helpful piece of advice for the rest of us, and pros use it all the time. The higher you tee the ball, the higher it'll launch. Great for downwind. The lower you tee your ball, the lower it'll launch. So adjust accordingly. Anyway, for Tiger, these adjustments meant he could vary his peak height anywhere from 100 feet on command. He could take maximum advantage of downwind shots and maximize predictability when he was into it. So I'll hit down on it, but I'll stop it quickly here. And it's not gonna go as far, but it's gonna have a low height. It'll be lower than tree height out there, so it gets, stays out of the wind, never gets above the tree height. Go a little bit further, maybe a little bit higher, you know, we go right on tree height. So I really try and feel like I cover it, I get on top of it, and then I'll, sh I'll shut it off after that. On this hole in 2014, Tiger opted for the low route, a safe and simple shot that the wind couldn't touch, predictably into the heart of the fairway. It's shots like the tee shot on the third hole, which in many ways best tell the story of Royal Liverpool and the kind of champion golfers it produces. Maybe a little unspectacular on the surface, but one which requires an essential combination of savvy and smarts and skill. It makes it, as Darwin once said, a breeding ground for golf's most mighty champions.